Hello everyone, this is Mouse961, and I'm here bringing you the third episode of the Warp Drive tutorial series. In this episode, we will be talking about the subspace capacitors and the enantiomorphic reactor. First, we're going to be looking at the subspace capacitors, and as you can see here, we have the basic, advanced, and superior subspace capacitors, each one with a varying internal capacity. The nice thing about these capacitors is that they can both accept and output EU and RF power from most cables. The downside to this, though, is that as the power goes in and comes out, there will be a 5% loss by default, unless you apply one or two superconductors, which act as upgrades. With two superconductors, you have a 0% loss of power going through the capacitor. The last block is the zero-point module, which is a creative-only uncraftable item that has an infinite internal storage and can input and output infinite power. Next, we're going to look at the three primary blocks used in building the an antimorphic reactor. Now, on top of these blocks, you also have the computer, a monitor if you so choose, and wiring to go with it, but these are just the warp drive blocks involved. On the far left here, we have the an antimorphic reactor core, which, if built in properly, you will see these jammed clouds around it. The proper setup will be shown later, but we're just going to move on for now. The stabilization laser, as you see here, you need four of these around the reactor, and the laser mediums go directly on top of the stabilization laser. So if we come over here and look at this setup, you will see that the reactor core is in the center. You have four stabilization lasers with one block between the reactor and the laser, and you can tell it's built correctly because there's going to be this blue circle right in the middle of the block, whereas on the other sides you don't see that. And the laser mediums have to go directly on top of the stabilization laser. So what happens is power is initially input to the laser medium here, which then goes into the stabilization laser. You turn on your reactor, and as long as you have enough power initially, the lasers will stabilize the reactor until you are creating more power than you are putting in. It is a very recommended idea to put a superior subspace capacitor directly on top of the reactor due to the high energy requirements of the four particle boosters and also the high energy output of the reactor. If we come over here and look at the monitor, you can see that I have a maximum output of 52,000-ish RF per tick. I have this reactor currently set to output at no more than 50,000 RF per tick, which is this spot right down here. And also, you'll see this thing on the left that's kind of flashing green and red, and that's the stability. My target stability is 10%, which is not 100% stable, but it's also not 0% stable, because at 0%, the reactor will go critical. The reason you want to have a lower stability is that the lower your stability is, the more power the reactor will create. So if you just keep an eye on the RF per tick right here, I'm going to actually go into the computer, and I'm going to hit the minus key to decrease my target stability, which is right here. Just keep an eye on this. If we take it down to 6%, and then we look over here at where the power is, you see that I'm now creating 56,000 RF a tick, which is significantly more than I was before, but it's also much closer to being in critical condition. So I'm just going to increase this back up to 10 so it's a bit safer. And also to note is that you cannot apply too much power to the reactor at once, or you will actually lose stability again. So if I suddenly set my target stability to, let's say, 50% from 10%, it would actually end up going critical because you're firing the lasers too much, which then causes it to lose stability. So if you do want to increase your stability, make sure you do it slowly, and probably not more than 5% at a time. And lastly, on this screen, you will see this spot right here that says the laser amount. And that is how much power is fired into the core from the lasers themselves to stabilize it. These numbers here that you see going down, you'll see they're going down about 7,000 each time. And that's because as they fire, they lose the 12,000, but there's also the particle boosters on top that immediately re refill the power. 
And now I will show you how to set up a reactor. So here's all my blocks I need. I'm going to just move all these down. I have the reactor core, which should actually be off the ground by one. I place my stabilization laser, and you see there's a nice blue circle here. And you see that every time I place something in the wrong spot, I get my jammed clouds. And there, we have our four lasers. Each one is blue with a green flashing light. And now I'm going to place my particle boosters on top. And I actually have a full capacitor right here, and I want it full because it's going to output initially to the particle boosters. As you see, they are now purple, and that is just the way we want them. So next is the wiring with the computers. You just place a modem, a wired modem, right here from Computercraft on the bottom. And I'm just going to place all these down. And then right click each modem to turn it on. And you can see down in my chat that each one is being turned on. And that's how you know that you did it correctly. So I'll place down my computer, place a modem on the back, turn that one on. And also, just for ease, I'm going to put a monitor right next to it. So it synced up, and it doesn't really need a name. We have one monitor, a core detected, and four lasers. That's exactly what we want. Go into our controls, and our current output mode, which can be changed with O, when you first turn it on, you want it to be set to hold, and that means that all the power stays inside the reactor. That is important at first because the more power, more energy that is inside the reactor, the more energy it will also create. So my target spill is at 50%. I'm OK with that. So I'm now going to press S to start the reactor. You'll see it's slowly going up. And as it's going up, I'm going to hit C. And it brings up my configuration menu. Now, the reactor uses about four to 5,000 RF per tick. So I'm going to set that to 4. My energy level, personally, I like 12,000. That way it doesn't fire too much and overload the system. And stability, I'll leave it at 50 for now. So now we just kind of wait. We'll just keep watching it. But I'm also going to hit the G key, which will... I'm not sure if it's actually going to work. Yeah. I can still hit the G key or T key, even though the output is set to hold. And it still changes this number here, because it used to be at 4,000. I hit G three times. And now it's down at 1,000. So, as we see here, we're increasing our output fairly quickly. So I'm going to press O. But I'm going to press O quickly, because at first you have unlimited, which is just going to start drawing all the power out of the system. We don't want that. We have our surplus above 1,000. And then we also have rated at 1,000. Personally, I like the rated system because that way you can see exactly what is going on, and you can more clearly configure the computer. And actually, now that we're at 2,000 RF per tick, I'll press T. So my output here is at 2,000. That's exactly what I want. And there we go. We got a good setup going. And as I said before, as this number increases, your output of RF per tick will also increase. And there is a difference between this number here, which is how fast the power in the reactor is increasing, and this one here, in that this number here is actually what you are outputting. And I can show you over here on this one. You see that my outputting is flashing, and that's because both the subspace capacitors are already at capacity. And lastly, a little fun setup we had, and obviously it had a rough time based on the holes around it, the bedrock, but this shows that you don't just need to use certain mods to create the system. Because in this one, we actually use Buildcraft. And we also inverted it, so that way all the, the laser mediums are on the bottom with the wires on top. So you can change around how you build it, but it has to be in the horizontal design like this. You can have the particle boosters on top or bottom. 
And now, for the fun part, I have this reactor here, which has been running for a little while. And I'm just going to go in here and hit the minus key until my target stability is at 1%. And we're just going to watch this stability here as it slowly goes down. And also, if you look over here, nothing else is changing except stability, and we're already up to 60,000. It doesn't look like it's going to be going critical anytime soon, so I'm just going to help it along a bit. Remove all the power, and it'll continue running for a little while. But you see the particle boosters are getting darker and darker. There's not as much power in them. You also see here the lasers. Oh my. Well, that blew up kind of quickly. <laughs> so, here's the explosion size of the reactor. <laughs> And this is why you want to have your reactors armored and placing armored blocks around your reactor in case something does go wrong. And if we come back to this one, yep, it's still going along nicely, outputting at 2,000, but we are creating 7,000. So I'm actually going to go over here and increase it a little bit more. And a general rule is that the lasers themselves require about 5,000 RF a tick for all four of them. And now that we've gone through everything, that is the end of the video. If you guys have any questions about the reactor or capacitors, just leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.